one more just before you because James is now ready. Okay, James Gladder, everybody. <laughs> Hello, everybody. What's the crack? See, nobody knows that either. That's like, what's up? How's it going? And you say, 90K. In other words, it's going really great, really fast. Well, anyways. <laughs> Good, I can really love some of the Irish accent, which I can't do very well because you won't know the difference. <laughs> So I want to do something humorous tonight. This last two weeks has been really hard on me, according to media, what's going on in the States and so on. So I'm going to do some levity and then I'll do what's wrong and why it hurts a little bit. And then I'm going to end on a lighter note, hopefully. So I thought maybe some limericks to lighten people up a bit. I'll see if I can do a little bit of Irish. I was a young fellow from Belfast. I wanted so badly to tell fast, not to climb up the stair, as the top of the stair was air. And that's why the young fellow fell fast. <laughs> I'll just read a few. You don't have to clap after everyone. <laughs> well, I like this one. The bottle of scent Louis sent was quite displeasing to Millicent. Her thanks were so cold that they quarreled untold about the silly scent Louis sent Millicent. Did anybody get that one? <laughs> okay. Oh, there was a young lady named Harris, who nothing could ever embarrass, till the boss felt one day in the tub where she lay turned out to be plaster of Paris. <laughs> Oops. And just a couple of little sayings, the older the fiddle, <clears throat> the lovelier the tune, I hope so. The longest road out is the shortest road home. So I don't know if you're aware of what was going on in the States, but this is Canada, the country based on Christianity, where you can be anything you want to be, as long as you're like everybody else. It's frightening for me when they start talking about changing the laws, because I did not grow up in an accepting country. You had to be a woman, you had to be a man, and there were roles for that, but I was left out. And that's the whole point. It makes me really mad on television when somebody holds a sign that says, God save our children from being perverted. Perverted? I was perverted because I was told I had to be a straight white male. I'm not. So I was traumatized, and I tell you it's good for life, and I'm still trying to come out of that trauma just because society brainwashed me to become straight, and it didn't work. But I'm worth it. I'm still holding <laughs> So rather than Matt and Mabel preach for 30 minutes, I wrote a couple things. And watch what's going on in the United States lately. We who know what true righteousness is must not be silent. I have a lot of, uh, I was going to say, sorry, born again Christian friends. So this is what I mean. We who know what is true righteousness must not be silent. Those who say they stand for the truth but fail to understand that God loves and accepts all creation are not yet enlightened. God created all of us, not some. True righteousness is to love and help every one of creation, whether we understand the way they live or not. If they are hurtful, we must protect them and ourselves while offering the help they need to find their way back to love. If they are loving, there is no law on earth or in heaven against them. Here's the child part. Homophobia begins in childhood when the child is taught that same-sex orientation and transgender identity is wrong, sinful, and unnatural. This traumatizes the children who have those traits and it can give the other children the idea it's okay to reject them and even hurt them. The real perversion is when we make our children afraid of themselves, their bodies, and others who happen to be different from them. There is nothing to fear if love is the center of bringing people together. There is nothing to fear when we understand that the love and fears of our neighbors are just the same as ours. This is what I call old wisdom for young ones. This is the other part. Something that happened in our neighborhood. Something that a white, middle-aged, European descent male had said, and I think not just one. And I do not take part in what they said, I do not agree with it. So, before I get all excited, hear me out. Is it racism when someone comes to deliberately take away something from another group of people? Maybe so, but I don't think that's what's happening here. Is it racism when someone comes to a community and shares from their heart what they love? And they work hard to build a community. It does change our world, but is it for the better? 
As we grow older, we will see changes around us, whether from people coming from other nations, other religions, or cultures, and the generation born from ours certainly will want to change our world into one they can relate to. No matter what, we will see change throughout our lives. So don't be afraid of losing your freedom. Just learn new ways of doing things and celebrate the newcomers. If we experienced oppression, how can we put that burden on others seeking freedom as we did? We fought hard for our freedom. Let's help those still oppressed to attain freedom too. If we fight among ourselves, we won't survive. If we celebrate with each other and embrace each other, we will be enriched by each other. We will learn and grow and our community, our, our city, will stay vibrant and whole. So, I hope we get something out of that. So now I want to have a bit of fun. I call it Mystery in the Sky. I might be more cockney than Irish, but let's go. As I was walking one day, the sun smiling down on May, I looked up and said, Hey, how can you burn so bright and never run out of light? Oh, said the sun, if you hang around another million years, you might see my spectacular end, my lost finale like the Big Bang as I explode, melting the galaxy, including the planet you call home. Ain't you afraid, said I? It's nothing looking forward to, you know, the end of your existence. Little one, she said back again, there's nothing to fear as you will never die. Just be changed into a whole new creation with new dreams to try. The sky gleamed around so boldly that day. I had to hear what he might say. The sky said, hey, mate. How many colors do you see me in every day? I wake in the morning with yellow and sometimes red, then follows pale hues of lavender cooling to blue shadows overhead, and clouds deeper and more royal, till the twilight comes with oranges and crimson to end your toil. I'm never changing and you never hear a complaint from me. I glow every shade luminous and bright like it's the best in sight. And why so many colors, you ask? Well, I'm full of air. If you listen closely, you can hear every breath, every word, every dare. Just listen to the whispers caressing the branches fluttering from tree to tree. So many who have come and gone, each one with their unique story. Some long-winded, some short and sweet, echoes tormenting, haunting many fears. But all stories need to be said, need to be heard, so the world, spinning millions of miles around the old sun, will be able to say its journey is done. And the roar of the crowds is heard as the wind pushes on its brothers, the dancing waves of the sea, beaten on the shoreline, wearing it smooth, but applauding its efforts to stand its ground over the centuries. The clouds rolled in with their thunderous blow, setting off fireworks, a sensational show, and in between I could hear them sing, listen to the rain, listen to the rain, tell us the story from whence we came, listen to the rain, feel it patting you, on, patting you without pain, and hear it giggling down the drain, drip, drip, dripping on the walk, Move to the beat, start dancing on the spot. Listen to the rain falling all around, waves of laughter, surging and waning in the continual pitch and pattern. All of nature is doing a dance. Can you feel? It's now your chance. We're all here for a short time, a hiccup in history, so don't be afraid of your part in the great mystery. Thank you. James Glad, everybody. James is it's, uh, it's James and then Glab G L A A B. So look for him on Facebook, and if you want one of his hats, some of them are one of them's got an entire city on top of it. It's really it's all in black and white. It's really spectacular. It has lights and stuff. Um, but yeah, and all the money goes to the Imperial Court of Toronto. So you can James Glab G L A A B. Thank you very much.